What's up everybody, it's Parker with BI Elite. I have an awesome video today showing you how to set up conditional formatting for a matrix for both values and subtotals in a dynamic way. As you may know, Power BI came out with a recent update that allows you to apply conditional formatting to both values, subtotals, and totals. And I'm gonna show you how you can set it up to where you can decide how you wanna show that conditional formatting, be it values or totals or values and totals, or even no conditional formatting. So we're gonna set this up so that it's dynamic to the user selection and it's pretty easy to do. So let's go ahead and hop on over to a demo file and we're gonna set this up from scratch. So in this demo file, I have my slicer created. It doesn't actually do anything. It's just a table of values uh, with these text values, values, totals, values, and totals, and none. So this isn't connected to the matrix in any way. There's no conditional formatting applied to this matrix. So the first thing that I wanna show you is the ability to create conditional formatting for both values and subtotals. This is a new functionality. We can just click this drop down arrow and come over to any of the conditional formatting options, I'm going to select font color. So once we click font color, we see that we can apply conditional formatting directly to values only, or values and totals, or totals only. So I'm gonna click values only, let's click okay, and we're gonna see we have a nice blue color scale. If I come back to conditional formatting and edit this font color, let's apply it to values and subtotals. And for whatever reason, when you do apply it to values and subtotals, you have to enter in a minimum and a maximum so I'm just gonna enter in, let's say 20 million. I think that will work. Let's click okay. And we'll see that the conditional formatting was applied to both the values and the subtotals, even the grand total row and grand total column. So this is going to be static, but we're gonna set this up in that dynamic way I was talking about. So the first thing we're gonna to wanna to do is get rid of that conditional formatting. And we're not gonna format based on color scale like previously or by rules. We're actually gonna use that by field option. So let's create a new measure that's going to drive our conditional formatting. So let's right click and create a new measure. I'm just gonna call this conditional formatting measure. And I'm gonna copy and paste my code over from the other file because it is quite lengthy, but I'm gonna walk you through each individual step. So here's the entire code. And there are a couple things going on here. Firstly, I'm creating a variable called average revenue. And what I'm doing here is I am comparing the average of each subcategory. So for example, I'm looking at total revenue. We see that 2014 was 768,000, 2015 was 879,000, 2016 was around 414,000. So the average of that is somewhere around 600,000. So that's what I'm calculating with average revenue. So I'm taking the average revenue of each subcategory here, and then I'm also taking the average revenue of each customer category. So we see that this is about 1.5 million, 1.6 million, 1.8 million. I'm taking the average of the customer categories as well. So I'm applying some logic here that's saying if is in scope the order date year, so that will mean we're actually on the values here. We are taking the average of our total revenue based on our order date year. If we're not in scope on that order date year, we're taking the average of the customer category total revenue. So this is just a quick way to determine which level of the hierarchy you're on. So firstly, I'm gonna take the average of our year level of the hierarchy. And if we're not on that values level, we're just taking the average of the customer category level. This is just for my purpose. I decided to create this conditional formatting based on if the current value is greater than or less than the average for that category. Category, but you can make your conditional formatting rules in any way you like. This just made sense for my data. So once we have that average value, we're then going to compare that average value to the current value. And we're gonna do that with a very large switch statement. So we're gonna return switch true. So we're evaluating for true. And then we're gonna have a list of conditions here. So this is going to involve our slicer here on the left side that is going to determine which selection we want. So our first line here, you can read as if max conditional formatting selection equals values. So if values is selected in our slicer and is in scope our year, so that is the values level of our matrix, and total revenue is greater than or equal to average revenue, color it green. So this is a hex code for green, so you can copy that down. It's pound 228B22. So that's gonna be a nice forest green. And the second line is the exact same thing. So if our selection is values and is in scope year, and total revenue is less than average revenue, we make that red, so this is red. So at this point, we have a working solution for our value selection. So as you can see, we are on values right now. 
we don't have this set up yet, so we actually need to apply this conditional formatting. So now that that measure is saved, let me go ahead and click enter. So I click enter on that conditional formatting measure. We can see it over on the right side. We actually need to apply this to our uh, matrix here. So let's click on the total revenue and conditional formatting, font color. And now instead of format by color scale, let's format by field value. And we want to apply to values and subtotals. We want to apply to everything here. And we are going to determine what to actually apply it to with our slicer. And then we're going to base it on our field, which is titled conditional formatting measure. Let's click OK. And we see that our values are conditionally formatted exactly like we would like them. So that's working perfectly. Let's go back to our conditional forming measure and go over the next few rules. So now when our selection equals totals and not is in scope order date year, meaning we're not on that bottom level of the hierarchy, instead we're looking at the subtotals and our total revenue is greater than or equal to average revenue, color that green again if our current selection is totals, not in scope for the order date year, and total revenue is less than average revenue, color it red. So very similar, you can just see that I'm just tweaking one thing for each rule. So values or totals is in scope on that year, not is in scope on that year, and total revenue is greater than or less than average revenue. So those individual rules is what allows us to know what we want to show in our conditional formatting. And then finally, just to show you quickly, let's go through the last example. And then also uh, conditional formatting selection equals values and totals. We don't even need to reference is in scope in this values and totals selection. We can just see if the total revenue is greater than or equal to average revenue, color it green. If we have selected values and totals and total revenue is less than uh, average revenue, color it red. It's very easy for that totals and uh, value selection. And then finally, if none of these applied, we want to color it black, which is that pound 000000. zero, 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 zero. So that's a lot to take in, but the more you look at this measure, the more it's going to make sense. We just have a list of rules that will only apply to a certain selection. So now that we minimize this, we'll see our fully working selection. So I showed you that values works. We can now click on totals and see if that works. We do see that it works. And just to give you a quick idea of that measure. So when we're on totals and order date dot year is not in scope, meaning it's not on this value level. It's only in scope on the customer category. And then we're seeing if our current value is greater than or equal to average. We can see that 1.5 million looks to be below average, where 16 million is well above average. We can even see that our grand total row is well above average as we'd expect. And we can turn off those total rows if that doesn't make sense for your data. But we can see that it is much higher than average, so it's colored green. And then we have values and totals, so let's click that. And now everything is colored. That's a little bit busy. That's actually the inspiration for this video. I didn't want everything to be colored, so I wanted to be able to decide if values or totals should be shown. And then finally, none, which isn't even referenced on our measure, but instead it's going to fall into this catch all category because none of these are true, then it's going to just color everything as black. So in case you're, um, in case your end user doesn't really necessarily need to see any conditional formatting, they can click none and it'll just show up as all black. But I do like this functionality because it does allow you to just get an idea of what you want to see and make sure that everything isn't too busy on your matrix. So I hope you like this video. If you do want access to the data behind this report, make sure you check out my training over at training.bielite.com. Purchase any course or sign up for a plan and you will gain access to this live database that you can pull from in your practice. So I hope you like this video and I'll see you in the next one.